Hot off of a solid win. See if he can find his revenge Three, on Jen. Two, and move his way over to Gatsby. Just as a reminder, Gatsby is sitting there waiting in Loser's Finals. And this is the last best of three of the evening. It's an extremely defensive start from both players as Jen tries to be the initiator. And Numbers wants none of it. There's no place like home. My man finds his way to the ledge. <laughs> yep. Oh man, Numbers clacking his heels together, and oh, look at all of the damage. This is the advantage that Numbers can do there if the opponent is too hungry for it. And <gasps> oh man, all that damage. And it's like, despite the fact that Jen knows, knows the risk of going off stage, trying to contest Numbers there, that they, they st you still have to engage with them. Oh, you gotta to play the game degree. at some point. Yeah. Because Numbers is going with his plan very easily. He's eliciting a reaction as he throws sun salutations and header balls at you. And like, he's slowly healing as he does all of that. And he's buffed if you decide to go in. Numbers has no real reason to leave the ledge. Well, but I mean, if this opponent is showing him that, oh, this is not a good place to be, then he will end up trying to get off of it. And it seems like that's kind of where we are right now. Those trades were not working out in the way that Numbers wanted. And now he's... All right, Ooh. that positioning was so deliberate from numbers that execution was perfect on the header spike, getting the kill on Jen. Oh. Normally, oh. yo, he tried to be sneaky with it. He tried to get that late hit to lock. It was really as filthy sometimes when he plays, but Jen just as filthy. Down there, finding its mark. Yeah, and that's because numbers missed the sun salutation. If he had gotten that on his shield, it would have given him the breathing room that he would have been able to recover like a lot more safely. But this time around, you know, Jen managing to get a little bit of a luck there. Still behind by quite a bit, 54%. Uh, in certain matchups, might not mean that much, but for this one, A, he's much closer to dying, and B, numbers will play to a lead with no remorse, if that's what's called for. It was a really good re-grab from numbers, too, as he moved the battle to the ledge. Unfortunately, we are high in the sky, and Jen is feeling really comfy. We're on the punch, he's not gonna find his mark, but back to, but an excellent tech, and we're back to the ledge just for safety. But we're gonna roll right into the back hit of forward tilt, and just like that, Numbers back in the driver's seat of this match. Oh, in the anti-air up tilt once more, coming Bro, I hate it here, that move is actually vile. Like, say whatever you will for Numbers planking the way that he does at the ledge. It's the anti-air tools, it's the, act it's the neutral that he's got. This man is a demon. Okay. That is now two for two on numbers trying to stall and just getting devoured by down smash through down airs because of it. All right, but still a decent lead for numbers and that did so much damage with deep breathing in effect. Oh, yeah, if, if you're if you're Jen, just try and stall as much as you can. Try and run down the clock so that, you know, <laughs> numbers got to take a breath again. Oh, and this could be the start of something really scary. Remember how the set with uh, Miles ended Killing with up air off the top at like 50%. That's something that, given the right stage positioning, Halotana can absolutely end stocks that early. Absolutely. I mean, there is something to be said about the fact that Jen is just making sure not to overextend on this ledge play, and he has seamlessly racked up so much percentage while not taking too much in his own. You know, a header ball here, a header ball there, that's whatever. Because Numbers can't really do anything with that. He just sort of resets neutral and puts himself back at the ledge, which in the grand scheme of things is dangerous. Ooh. That's the projectile you have to worry about. This is the position you have to be afraid of because that's Numbers on the hunt. And now he's taking game one. Yeah, and the way that Numbers, he will often go back to that roll range when he has Sun, which I don't think he actually had Sun right there. But the thing is, he goes back to that roll range and a lot of opponents will be like, oh, now I can jump. Oh, now I can, and then he'll shoot the sun salutation. But Jen, knowing numbers, having played against him a bunch, thought that was a bait. But he didn't remember, he didn't have sun in the pocket, so as soon as he rolled right into it, numbers hadn't committed to any option. Boom, up tilt right in his face. Yup. It's like that photo covers so much space, too, because it's either you get checked and you're moved off stage, or it pops you upwards, and at those percentages, you're dying. Oh, so we're back at it again on Stadium, which I think probably the best possibility that Jen can have as far as stages are concerned. And he didn't play it poorly. I think it's just being a bit more proactive when the battle does find its way to the flats, because that's where numbers start swinging pretty heavy. Yeah, and also a big, I mean, 
It's easy to say, hard to do, but avoiding those combo starters at lower percents from Wii Fit, the up tilt the neutral air, especially if deep breathing is involved. Because, oh, just, oh that spacing was beautiful. Ooh. But Jen uncharacteristically doesn't react and get a punish. Ankle check on the mess. And that's not enough, but <laughs> Jen at 138% trapped at the ledge once more. Numbers gives him space. And that actually means that now he's in control a bit. Let's see if he can do anything with it. No, he just wasn't spaced properly with warp. Got popped by the hoops. And Numbers found his kill right afterwards. Yeah. I also like that lead throw from Numbers. Kind of evaluated the risk and realized even if I roll up, most likely I'm only going to eat a forward air or some type of throw. And I can't possibly die from it, but Jen. Yeah, I've the really been liking these up smashes uh, from Jen as a response to ground and neutral. Because I feel like so many players get antsy and they want to be in the air. They want that air to ground to start their damage. Well, it, oftentimes when I see it work is when somebody's just standing there, you know? It's like a standoff situation. It's just like, uh, okay, let me, let me just YOLO old faithful in your face. I, hey, it's working. I mean, yeah, definitely. It is a it is a call out to be sure. It's also one that he has to be nervous about getting too eager with. But Jen is not the kind of player who would like abuse a tactic. He's not. Do not plank in my face. You have been warned. That heal was a warning shot. Oh, and here, but this is another one of those low percent combos with deep breathing. But Jen, really, I think his DI has really improved. He's not getting hit by these same things anymore. Trying to space with the back air, I think, is a good choice from numbers because it's going to be a lot of damage. But at the same time, you have to be more careful of the actual ledge play. And the hoop's actually saving Jen in that situation. Uh, I think he would have made it back regardless. If anything, it's, it's like part of, you know, that's what of the things Numbers does. He'll hold down just a little bit on those hoops to make well, at least attempt a two-frame. And as it, was, as it stands, about 50% onto Numbers, you see 9%. If he manages to take a stock soon, not the worst thing in the world, but every single hit he takes, every little nickel and dime that gets tossed his way makes this comeback more and more insurmountable. Actually, in the matter of speaking, he's already been lapped, and it's looking like Jen is just in a consistent Powerful lead in this game. That's going to be game three. Powerful indeed. And I think I saw the running back uh, hand gesture from numbers. So stadium will be the setting for this whole set. Yeah, numbers got I mean, I think that uh, it's so hard to say, you know, because one of the adjustments, like what adjustments does numbers need to make? As we move into game three, honestly, I feel like he's, he needs to he needs to do the John numbers just more effectively because yeah, his ledge play did not feel as safe as it typically was. I think there were I think there was even maybe a technical flub involved in that one where he got downed at the very bottom of the screen. Uh, so honestly, kind of similar to the first set they played, he needs to just clean up execution a little bit, especially when you're on the ledge, like where a single mistake can really really cost you. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, also another thing is Numbers is the kind of player where he can get inside of his own head, you know, especially if he's... Oh, like, yeah, he's... It was, yeah. In spite of how he plays, he is human, too, and he's going to get frustrated if you're consistently just resetting neutral in, uh, in your favor against him. Because, like, as of game two, especially the latter half of that game two, Jen has been really consistent in executing a flow chart that just leaves numbers at the ledge taking more and more damage without really getting misposition. You don't really see the battle taking place any further than the leftmost edge of the platform front stadium while Jen is in control. Ooh, that was a very surprising, almost uncharacteristic spot dodge after the getup. Numbers had managed to use his invincibility but not exploit it. There are tiny little human errors that are coming into play here. It feels like Numbers has the right decisions, the right idea in terms of strategy, but it's the fingers, it's the reactions that are kind of letting him down. As I say that, he is still in advantage here. He could very easily clean up this stock, but oh, back to neutral. Zen managing to find his way. That dance attack not managing to cover, but forward tilt gets it done either way. Really good reversal for numbers. How is he? I was gonna say how he's opting to do it, but instead he's just gonna get roasted for pressing buttons. Yeah, and that was one thing we're seeing more of. 
these deep, deep chases working out for Jen. But in game one, it felt like he would go for them and it would end up just like being a disaster. But this time around, I think he's adjusted a little bit. Goes for them more when numbers is at those higher, like, you know, in the, like, the 45 degrees away from the stage. And that seems to be a difference maker because that getting that stock right there was, was massive. It was paramount. And now Jen has not only evened up the stock counts, but keeping these percents even, keeping himself in control as numbers is now, now he feels trapped. You know, even though percentage-wise and stock-wise it's relatively similar, I feel like this Game 3 is just entirely belonged to Jen. Like, he's been dictating this match happening at the ledge more so than numbers usually facilitates that style of play. And that's wild to say, because normally when it's numbers on the screen, you know what to expect. But here, Jen is forcing numbers to the ledge and forcing him to be very choosy about when to actually go in. That being said, now all of a sudden Numbers is the one with control at the ledge. Okay, not once more Jen getting off kind of for free. I think that fact that deep breathing came in at the last second there, very helpful for John Numbers. But, oh, that big up smash not landing. Oh. And now he's looking for this kill, trying to pressure him. Not working out, though. Bit of a scramble at the ledge. It's going to lead into Jen. Oh, the down throw? I guess DI mix up at that percentage. A good choice, nonetheless. Right, I feel like it's not often we see the wind box from uh, Sun Salutation lead the ball back into stuff, but once again, another catch with explosive frame from Jen. And not only that, I think I'm pretty sure numbers had the frames to actually air dodge that. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Are a couple of other times also where like the you know, dash attack on his shield wasn't really punished. Numbers keeping himself even, but definitely the reactions aren't quite there. Not what we're used to seeing from him. Can he still manage to take out Jen even if he isn't playing? You know, with the, you know, 60 FPS brain that we normally know him to do. <laughs> My man's lagging a little bit. <laughs> In his I body mean, and soul, he's, he's trying to download Halo right now. I will. <laughs> I will. Give him space, not that much bandwidth in the numbers machine. <laughs> Okay, yeah, able to react to that one, and that's going to be some big damage. And it's the sort of thing where, like, if Numbers is reacting, kind of maybe not as good as he normally is. Ooh! Oh! Really big whiffs on both sides. Oh, the back air. I think that might have been the late hit, though. And now we have this type of match where, oh, Numbers once again off stage, going for the deep chase. Numbers adjusting really nicely, makes it back to the ledge just fine. Oh, he didn't expect the neutral ends up getting hit by the later parts of it. Oh, that was really big. Tension sit high right now as Numbers goes for his deep breathing. He's got the buff now. <laughs> Almost any move is going to be able to kill if Numbers can find his hit. And out of the scramble, he tries to get forward tilt and sun salutation. Jen is not going to give it to him. Oh, another oh, back air. Yo, he wanted falling in air into up tilt, I think. <laughs> He's so desperate for the deep breathing, it oh, works out. Easy. Yo, the fact that, that that deep breathing took so much time, and I feel like Jen didn't actually go in.